ट्वेंटी वन लेसन फॉर द ट्वेंटी वन सेंचुरी बाय यूअल नोआ हेरारी पार्ट थ्री डिस्पर एन हो दो द चैलेंजेस आर अनप्रीसीडेंटेड एंड दो द डिसमेंट्स आर इंटेंस ह्यूमन काइंड कैन रेस्ट टू द ओकेजन इफ वी कीप आर फियर्स अंडर कंट्रोल एंड बी अ बिट मोर हम्बल अबाउट आर व्यूज चैप्टर टेन टेररिज्म डोंट पैनिक Terrorists are masters of mind control. They kill very few people, but nevertheless manage to terrify billions and shake huge political structures such as European Union or the United States. Since 11 September 2001, every year terrorists have killed about 50 people in the European Union, about 10 people in the USA, and about seven people in China, and up to 25,000 people globally. In contrast each air traffic accidents kill about 80,000 Europeans 40,000 Americans 270,000 Chinese and 1.25 billion people altogether diabetes and high blood sugar levels kill up to 3-5 million people annually while air pollution kills about 7 million people so why do we fear terrorism more than sugar and why do governments lose election because of sporadic terror attacks but not because of chronic air pollution as the literal meaning of the word indices terrorism is a military strategy that helps to change the political situation by spreading fear rather than by causing material damage this strategy is almost always adopted by very weak parties who cannot inflict much material damage on their enemies of course every military material loses and is usually proportional to the force inflicting the losses in terrorism fear is the main story and there is an astonishing disproportion between the actual strength of the terrorist and the fear they manage to inspire it is not always easy to change the political situation through violence On the first day of the battle of the Somme, 1 July 1960, 90,000 British soldiers were killed and another 40,000 wounded. By the time the battle ended in November, both sides together suffered more than a million casualties, including 3 lakh dead. Yet this horrific carnage hardly altered the political balance of the power in Europe. It took another 2 years and millions of additional casualties. for something to finally snap compared to the somme offensive terrorism as a pre matter the paris attacks of november 2015 killed 130 people the brussels bombing of march 2016 killed 32 people and the manchester arena bombing in may 2017 killed 22 people in 2002 at the height of the palestinian terror campaign against israel when buses and restaurants were bombed by on a daily basis the yearly toll reached 451 dead israelis in the same year 5542 israelis were killed in car accident a few terrorist attacks such as the bombing of pan am flight 103 over lok ripen in 1988 killed hundreds the 911 attacks set a new record killing almost 3000 people yet even this is drafted by the price of conventional warfare if you had all people killed and wounded in europe by terrorist attacks since 1945 including victims of nationalist religious leftist and rightist groups all alike the total will still fall for short of casualties and another number of obscure first world war battles such as the third battle of essen or the 10 battle of isonzo How then can terrorists hope to achieve much following an act of terrorism the enemy continues to have the same number of soldiers tanks and ships as before the enemy's communication network roads and railways are largely intact his factories port and buses are hardly touched how are the terrorists hope that even though they can barely dent the enemy's material power fear and confusion will cause the enemy to misuse his intact strength and overreact terrorists calculate that when the enraged enemy uses his massive power against them he will raise a much more violent military and political storm than the terrorists themselves could ever create during every storm many unforeseen things happen mistakes are made atrocities are committed public opinion wavers 
naturals change the stance and the balance of power shifts. Hence, terrorists resemble a fly that tries to destroy a china shop. The fly is so weak that it cannot move even a single teacup. So how does a fly destroy a china shop? It finds a bull, gets inside its ear and starts buzzing. The bull goes wild with fear and anger and destroys the china shop. This is what happened after 9-11 as Islamic fundamentalists incited the American bull to destroy the Middle Eastern china shop. Now they flourish in the village and there is no shortage of short-tempered bulls in the world. Reshuffling the cards Terrorism is a very unattractive military strategy because it leaves all the important decisions in the hand of the enemy. Since all the options the enemy had prior to a terrorist attack are at his disposal afterwards as well, he is completely free to choose among them. Armies normally try to avoid such a situation at all costs. When they attack, they don't want to stage a frightening spectacle that would anger the enemy and provoke him to head back. Rather, they seek to inflict significant material damage on the enemy and reduce his ability to retaliate. In particular, they seek to eliminate his most dangerous weapons and options. This is, for example, what Japan did in December 1941 when it launched a surprise attack on the USA and sank the US Pacific Fleet in Pearl Harbor. This wasn't terrorism, it was war. The Japanese could not be certain how the Americans would retaliate after the attack. Except about one thing, no matter what the Americans decided to do, they would not be able to send a fleet to the Philippines or Hong Kong in 1942. Provoking the enemy to action without eliminating any of his weapons or options is an act of desperation. Take only when there is no other option. Whenever it is possible to inflict serious material damage, nobody gives that up in favor of mere terrorism. If in December 1941 the Japanese torpedoed a civilian passenger ship in order to provoke the USA while leaving the Pacific fleet in Pearl Harbor intact, this would have been madness. But terrorists have little choice. They are so weak that they cannot wage war. So they opt instead to produce a theoretical spectacle that would hopefully provoke the enemy and cause him to overreact. Terrorists stage a terrifying spectacle of violence that captures our imagination and turns it against us. By killing a handful of people, the terrorists cause millions to fear for their lives. In order to calm this fears, immense displays of force such as per- persuasion of entire population or the invasion of foreign countries. In most cases, this overreaction to terrorism poses a far greater threat to our security than the terrorists themselves. Terrorists don't think like army generals. Instead, they think like theater producers. The public memory of the 9-11 attacks testifies that everyone understands this intuitively. If you ask people what happened in 1911, they are likely to say that Al-Qaeda knocked down the Twin Tower of World Trade Center, yet the attack involved not merely the towers but two other actions, in a particular a successful attack on the Pentagon. How come few people remember that? If the 1911 operation was a conventional military campaign, the Pentagon attack should have received most of the attention. In this attack, al Qadr managed to destroy part of enemy's central headquarters, killing and wounding senior commanders and analysts. Why is it that public memory gives far more importance to the destruction of two civilian buildings and the killing of brokers, accountants and clerks? It is because the Pentagon is a relatively flat and unassuming building, whereas the World Trade Center was a tall phallic totem whose collapse made an immense audiovisual effect. Nobody who saw the images of the collapse could ever forget them, because we intuitively understand that terrorism is theater. We judge it by its emotional rather than material impact. Like terrorists, thus combating terrorism should also think more like three to producers and less like army journals. Above all, if we want to combat terrorism effectively, we must realize that nothing the terrorists do can defeat us.
वी आर दी ओनली वंस हु कैन डिफेट आर सेल्स इफ वी ओवर रिएक्ट इन अ मिस गाइडेड वे टू टेररिज्म प्रोवोकेशन टेरिस अंडरटेक एन इम्पॉसिबल मिशन टू चेंज द पोलिटिकल बैलेंस ऑफ पावर टू वॉयलेंस डिस्पाइट हैविंग नो आर्मी टू अचीव दर एम टेरिस प्रेजेंट दी स्टेट विद एन इम्पॉसिबल चैलेंज ऑफ दर ओन टू प्रूव दैट इट कैन प्रोटेक्ट ऑल इट्स रिटीजन फ्रॉम पोलिटिकल वायलेंस एनी वर एनी टाइम The terrorists hope that when other state tries to fulfill this impossible mission, it will reshuffle the political card and hand them some unforeseen egg. True, when the state rises to the challenge, it usually succeeds in crushing the terrorists. Hundreds of terrorist organizations were wiped out over the last few decades by various states. In 2000. Two in 2001, Israel proved that even the most furious terror campaigns can be suppressed by brute force. Terrorism knows full well that the chances in such a confrontation are against them, but since they are very weak and have no other military option, they have nothing to lose and much to gain. Once in a while, the political storm created by counter-terrorist campaigns does benefit the terrorists. which is why the gamble makes sense a terrorist is like a gambler holding particularly bad hand or tries to conceive his rivals to reshuffle the cards he cannot lose anything but he may win every